Hello, welcome everybody to my first stream of this year, 2018. Happy New Year to everybody. Um, today I'm going to continue with the challenges of Advent of Code 2017 because I want to finish it. Some people have requested that they want to see that uh, go up to the, to the last day, to day 25, so it's um, 11 days left. So let's say if we can do one challenge per day, that would be awesome, but I guess that um, latest challenges are going to be harder so probably this will take me the whole month so um, as you know that I will be online uh, every day about this at, at this time more or less for an hour or two depending on the challenge and after this after I finish advent of code I will be starting a new project uh, I have two projects in mind I'm waiting for um, extra stuff from other people in one case I'm waiting for some API keys for doing some project in the other one the second project that is most likely the one I will be doing I'm, I'm working with an awesome designer an awesome product manager that um, I will reveal who is he, who is it who is who is he when when if the project goes goes ahead uh, it's going to be an awesome project that will touch front-end, back-end, the, um, all the DevOps part, um, maybe even mobile, and it will be online, and you will be able to use it, it will be a, a free thing, and hopefully you will like it. But that will be in the future. Today, let's focus on advent of code. So, uh, challenge number 14. This is where we left the other day. I haven't even opened it yet, so I don't know what is this about. Okay, it doesn't, it's not too long, that's probably either very good or very bad. Okay, so suddenly a uh, scheduled job activates the system disk defragmenter, where the situation... Where the situation different? Where the situation different? You might sit and watch it for a while. Oh yes, we have all done that, right? Let's open this YouTube video to see what it is. Oh... Yes... I remember this. Oh man, I totally remember this. Oh man, yes. Okay, that's a defragmenter for for um, the young people of the channel. That's what we used to do, like what, thirty years ago, twenty years ago. Oh man. Okay, focus. But today you don't just don't have that kind of time. It's soaking up valuable system resources that are needed, needed elsewhere. So, and so the only option is to help it finish its, its task as soon as possible. The disk in question consists of an 128 uh, by 128 grid. Each square of the grid is either free or used. On this disk, the state of the grid is tracked by the bits in the sequence of not hashes. Oh, that's from the previous event of code. Okay, I remember what that one. A total of 128 node hashes are calculated, each corresponding to a single row in the grid. Each hash contains 128 bits, which correspond to individual grid squares. Okay, each bit of a hash indicates whether that square is free or used, either a 0 or a 1. The hash inputs are a key. The hash inputs are a key string, which is your personal input, a dash and a number of a number from 0 to 127 corresponding to the row. For example, if your key is if your key string were F L Q R that, that string, then the first row will be given by the bits of the not hash of the key dash zero. The second row from the bits of the not hash will be the key dash one and so on until the last row which is the key dash 127 okay the output of a not hash is traditionally represented by a 32 hexadecimal digits each of these digits correspond to four bits for a total of 128 bits to convert to bits turn each hexadecimal digit to its equivalent binary value high bit first so 0 is 0, 0, 0 1 is 0, 0, 0, 1 Oh, e becomes 1110, F is 1111, and so on. And a has that begins with, so a has that begins with A0, C, something, something, will be 1001, 0000, 1110. Okay. 
Continuing this process, the first eight rows and columns for the for this key appears as follows. Using hash to denotate use squares and dot to denotate free ones. Okay. In this example, eight hundred eight thousand one hundred zero eight squares are used across the entire grid. Given your actual key string, how many squares are used? Okay. So the input, this is the key. Okay. So basically, what is telling me, I have to compute the hash, the not hash for every row using key dash zero, key dash one, key dash two for for every row. Then convert that to binary and count the number of ones. Seems easy, especially because we still have the other code around. Do we? What was it? Number ten. Okay, so number ten. Let's see if I have something. Um, so this was the key, and this is the hexadecimal, right? If I remember correctly. So what is challenge two? Challenge two. Yeah. Okay, so challenge two was actually the not hash, right? Yes, okay. So that's that's very easy because we have this function challenge two, which is the hash of the computes the not hash for a string. So okay, the first thing we are going to create the test for this. Actually, the very first thing is to create the uh, folder structure that we need. Folder. Actually, give me one second while I change something in my setup. I want to open the chat to a separate window so I know what people is saying because sometimes people talk and I don't uh, pay enough attention to the chat. Let's see if I can change that. Come on, Twitch. Ah, uh, yes, that's much better, I expect. Okay, awesome. Yeah, much better. Okay, so let's do this. So as I was saying, uh, let's create a structure for this, which is the input, the solution, yes, and the test, yes. The input is going to be very small, it's just this file. So we probably don't need a file for this, but just to keep consistent consistency with other tests, I'm going to use a file. Um, okay, so this is the first row of our columns. So the test is okay. Let's copy the structure of the tests. Challenge one. So the this is the So the key is this value that they give to me, and then the answer is this. So uh, okay, as usual, this fails because. Uh, Obviously, I haven't finished it yet. I haven't implemented it yet. But at least tells me that the setup is correct. So, let's open the solution. So, what is this thing? It's going to receive an, a key. Let's, I don't need to pass the input this time because I don't need to split that by lines or anything. And so, okay, we receive the key. And what we need to do? Um, Uh, 
yeah um the grid size is going to be 128 so um what you need to do is to loop into this so um i need to create um this let's say row keys so for The raw key is, as the example says, is the original key plus then, what is it? A dash and a number from 0 to 127. So the original key, dash, and then the index of the loop. Okay. Um, so we need to import. We need to import the original not function, which I did in um, the challenge number 10. I need one to support that as a not. So this is the key, and I compute the not of the raw key. Um, let me see if the code is correct. The usage chance to receive the input and then this number of. Do I need to change that? Yes, and that gives me the hash in XRS. Okay. That's Let's see if that works. Cleanup. Okay, let's go for it. Oh yeah, seems to be working. And then we need to convert this to binary, which is um, parse int of hash in base two. See, it's still working. Uh, no, it's not that easy. It's um, no, sorry. It's converting basic base base thin and then convert back to a string of radix two. All these zeros are not good. What's going on here? What's going on here? Let's see. So, hexadecimal. Oh, uh, it's too big. So, if this is bigger than, than the maximum integer we can represent, we can't do this. We need to pass this um, character by character. So, what we are going to do is uh, easy. Just iterate over it. So this will be the character. And then just convert that single character to hexadecimal right. so what I'm going to do is to get the hash convert it into an array and then for each hexadecimal character let's call this h I'm going to return the binary conversion. It's not exactly what I want because I need to uh, use padding for count the zeros and the ones, but it's, for now it's good enough for the test. Okay, so this is it. Um, so instead of summing, saving this, I'm going to reduce this to create a, an array. 
So this is the accumulated value, the new value. And I start with an empty array. And what we do is so we okay. So um, to explain what I want to do, I want to convert this to an array of one and zeros because it's going to be easier to count and to operate with that and a string. So the way to convert hexadecimal to binary is using this, but this generates an string. So I need to split that string. Let's do all in line. And this will give me array an array with the binary representation of one character or one yeah one hexadecimal digit. So the thing is this one What's the problem? Yeah, um, and because I'm using reduce, I'm using reduce because um, I'm going to create a bigger array, okay? So hash is a string of hexadecimal. I go character by character, so this has uh, 32 values, I remember correctly. So this is this creates an array with 32 elements, but I went I want at the end an array with 128. So if you use map, that's you can do that. You could use flat map, but I don't have a flat map tool and I don't want to implement one. So I usually use reduce for that. So what we have is an original array and we just keep pushing pushing stuff into that array. Actually, this is easier to, to read. So the every time we look, we basically convert one item to the array. Sorry, every time we look over the characters of the hexadecimal string, we convert it to a array of one and zeros and we keep pushing, keep adding that to the accumulated value. So at the end, binary half will be an array with 128 elements, if that's correct. Yeah, so every individual one is between one and zero, I mean between one and four, and then they concatenate all of them. So I need to make sure that it has length four at least at top. Um, is there a easy way to do that? Um, probably the this is not very elegant, but okay, it's the way it is. So if if parse int if the length is zero, then um, we just fill this with zeros. there is a smarter way of doing this um yeah i know i know i know, I know. okay this is a bit a bit hacky so what we are going to do is you we pick the array we put always four zeros at the beginning so the final array is between five and eight and then we pick the four latest characters that would be just like left padding the array with zeros actually i can use left pad Everyone. So um, let's create another loop. For H is up to four, and what we do is we um, shift, no, unshift. We put a zero at the top. Ah, that's that's no, that's that's easy. Let's that's too much. I don't want a, a loop just for this. So this will be zero 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 zero, and then 
the binary number and then we just pick a slice of this starting in minus 4 I think so this is the padded representation of the binary and at the end we just return the accumulated values plus the binary representation okay so all of them are 4444 four, four, four. oh I need to convert these to numbers let hold on so each character uh, I want to convert this to number so at the end okay all the arrays awesome let me see if this actually matches this so it should be 110 one, 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 
I probably did and it broke something. Okay, so this is the function. This is, yeah, see, I did refactor too much and now it's hard to follow. Totally my bad. this is not working kind of property length of undefined how come it's, it's here dude it's you don't like this syntax for some reason yeah right so this is the function this is the initial value well This all right, no, not ours. It pass it okay. So, one no, it's not fine. It's filter okay. Find returns from value of filter returns. Yeah, right, okay. But makes sense now. Okay, now clean up this a little bit. So, that's my reduce function there and then start in with zero again the it happened again the up key doesn't move <sighs> and we're back Something is wrong with my idea, with my BS code configuration. Okay, so we run this number of ones. Wow, this is super slow. Why this is so slow? What am I doing? Oh, not was slow. Okay, so this actually works. This return one eight one eight 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 one zero one. Um, before going further, let me debug this and see why this is slow because it's super slow it's too slow um, okay, this one this screen is too bright right Okay, so um, no profiler start. Too many arrays? Yes, too many arrays. Okay, so this is the, the flame chart. What so 
Luxus lift. Okay, so it's yeah, all these um, come from source ten, meaning that is the yeah the challenge two of the other one. So it's it's the not implementation. Okay, let me turn on the lights. I was getting blind. Okay. Anyway, back to business. So we pass the input. So the the test is um, the the example in the page is already passing. Is the value I expected. So now let's run this with the input. I don't need you anymore. Let's run this with the input and see what's the output. Um, it's A304. Let's see if that's correct. A304. That's right. Okay. Challenge number two, or part number two. No. All that the fragmenter needs to know is the number of regions. No. A region is a group used square that are all adjacent, 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 not including diagonals. Every used square is in exactly one region. Oh my God. Long used squares from their isolated region. Where? Okay. So in the example above, the following nine regions are visible. It's marked with a distinct digit. So one, two, three, four. Oh. Yeah, what's the deal with this? Of particular interest is the region marked with eight. Will it does not appear contiguous in a, this is small view? All the squares marked eight are connected when considering the whole grid in total. Okay. So number of regions that are present. Whoa. Okay. Um, Um, so we get number of ones, and now what? We how do we determine the number of regions in a in a smart way? Okay, so the Hmm. Okay, what I'm thinking is um, let's describe the solution here. So we are going to have maybe to get a blackboard to draw the solution I want to go with. It will be much easier. Okay, what we have is basically an array like this, right? Some values here. Some random values here. Let's make this smaller for the explanation. So what we need to know how many regions are there. So so we need to go. For every square, we check the four um, neighbors to see if they are active. If they are, then we what? Then we then what? Okay. Then I mark because these are numbers. I'm going to mark to mark this with the numbers. Okay. So. No, because then I need to keep track of the number. Ah, okay, how do we count the number of regions? How do we count the number of regions? Yeah, I know. Okay, yeah. So we passed 
we walk the, the grid one by one starting from the left we got right we end up let me let me make this bigger to explain what I am to, about to implement okay so we start walking the grid one by one um, and then every time we find a one what do we do Yeah, so basically every time I find a one I need to find all the connected dots and then for every char for every character um, find character at the top left right so this one is going to be a recursive function, right? It is uh Yeah, so for, for every character, what I do is remove it and then go to the four neighbors and if they are they are a one, remove it as well. I keep doing this for all the characters that are uh, connected to number one and then I just at the end I just increase the counter like we have we have found a group instead of remove it actually this is replaced with zero so basically I, I iterate through the grid the first moment I find one uh, number one I try to expand finding all the number ones that are connected to that first number. I increment the number of groups, that's one extra group, I have found a group, and replace that entire group with zero, so it doesn't interfere with the rest, and just keep processing. It's not going to be optimal because I'm going to review, visit some node twice, or more than twice, but that's okay, that's probably... Um, enough so this is probably going to work oh. interesting interesting twist okay so um, the first thing first example so preparing the test for this the channel is number two uh, for example, above, what is number of regions to be this? Obviously this fails, challenge 2 is not implemented, let's implement it now. So what is going to challenge 2 going to do? Actually, you know what? It's probably easier if I just put this over there so people can read it. I don't need this. Okay. At least they have some um, people joining now can see that what I'm trying to solve. Hello, people joining now. Okay, so let's first export this to a function which is a hash grid we receive the key and returns the aha I don't need to count the ones, I need to return the full grid now so my initial solution the one that returned the right was fine ok, so This is going to return the the 
uh, hashes is a list is an array and then every time we process a row we put a new hash which is we split it we reduce it and then what do we do for every character in the hexadecimal string we convert it Okay, see, yeah, sorry. So, um, what we're going to do is transform the previous code into a function that actually does the reduction. So, it iterates, it splits the string, the original string, per character, and then for every character, it um, reduces the list, of <coughs> the list of characters to a list of integers, a list of binary binaries. So, uh, we reduce it, and then this. So basically uh, we receive function and the every uh, iteration we are going to return the values we have found so far plus the current number converted to um, to zeros. But I need to pass this, right? Yeah, so this is going to split it. Then uh, no, let's, let's split this into variables, it's going to be much, much easier to follow. So, um, the binary hash is this. And h is hexadecimal. Okay, we pass hexadecimal character, we split it and we convert to a number. Okay, and then the hash palette is we're going to use the same technique. We um, prepend four zeros and then we pick the last four characters of that uh, array. Okay, so that's parejas, and the result of this is the accumulated value plus the hash we have computed. So this is this, we close it, this is the initial value, which is an empty array, and this is the relax function. And then is the list of hashes. The, we push that to the list of hashes. Okay. And to check that this actually works, we return the list of hashes and challenge one. We receive the key. So what we do is um, we hash it. And then we count the number of uh, one characters. But first, let's see if this works as I expect. So it's going to be this one. Let's see what's the value of hashes. Oh, 
Okay. All the hashes as we expect with all the 128, well, 128 items each seems correct. So, more reduce. So, what's going to reduce this? Zero. Same thing. A function that receives the accumulate value and the, um, the let's call it the line. Then same thing. We reduce the line. No, we don't have to reduce it. So line. We filter the elements that are zero. Sorry, that are one. Okay, so basically for every line, we filter the num the elements that are one, and we actually um, this one to be easier to understand. So every line of the hash, we map it to the number of ones in that line. Whoops, and then we just uh, sum it. Nothing should have changed, everything should be the same. Still as low as hell. <laughs> okay, so that's challenge one. Still, the difference is that now I have a function which the, with the number of hashes, with a function that I can use to get the actual the whole hash. Okay. Now the funny part begins. Let me um, disable the other test and only run this one. So let's start. For each line, and for each character in a line. we do is uh, find group these are the, the index okay um and what is going to find group is going to do If block is one, what they do is return um, no, I don't use block here, I will use grid. If grid x y is one, I return the total of I mean, one plus the element um, to my right the element to my left the element above me and the element below me If it's one, we equal it to zero. Um, I I don't have to return anything. I just need to keep deleting the parents. So 
So um, let me simplify this. If the grid is zero, we don't do anything. Else we put a zero in that element of the of the grid and then try to keep deleting the parents. Keep deleting the surrounding elements in the same group. Does it make sense? Yes. It does. I hope it does. Uh, okay, I don't need to pass grid probably. So this is going to basically um this is remove group. Okay, and then for each say we say if block if the block is a one then Okay, this is going to be, if it works, it's going to be easy. We increment the number of groups, we have found a new group, and we just remove this group from the grid. Okay, and at the end, we just return the number of groups. Easy, right? It's going to be that easy? Nah. This is a parse error. Where do I have a syntax error? Okay. Assignment to constant variable. Yes, because this is flat. <sighs> um, yeah, so something I have to check for is that I don't uh, go over the boundaries of the array. So if um, if this is smaller than the grid, so if I have element at the right, means that I'm minus one. X is bigger than zero means that they have an element at the left. And then same thing here if Y and Y. So I'm okay here. Do I have a of one element? So imagine it's five, so zero, one, two, three, four. From the left is going to be five. Yes, this seems correct. Yep. Room deleting elements from the array. No, what happened? Nine thirty four. What do you like about eight line thirty four? This one. Yes. Okay, what what's going on? Why don't you like this? Stop in all exceptions. My API, my uh, API is wrong, so I'm expecting grid x and y, grid x and y, grid x and y, grid x and y. Okay. Uh, this is going to be slow, right? Very, very slow. Let's do this. 
Deluxe with a console log, so let's see. Okay, it's progressing. Looks like. But very slow. Okay, today is not the day of fast algorithms. 128, come on, come on, mate, almost there. Oh, it works! 41 seconds, okay. Um, we can improve this if. Um, can we improve this? How can we improve this? Why is this? Why are you so slow? Let's think. Let me think. Okay, probably these for each are very slow, so I'm going to do uh, normal loops. So E is equal of grid length. I is smaller than grid length. I mean, uh, loop. And then h is smaller than grid, grid y h. So block is going to be, let me call this x, y for, it's going to be easier to follow. So x, y, x. Y, X, X, Y. And then, if the block is one, we increment the group and we just remove this group expanding from here. I feel like we are visiting the same node multiple, multiple times, and we don't, we don't have to. Hello, yes, JavaScript. I love it. Uh, hey, much faster now. See, if just removing the for each, how fast it is. Just removing the for each. Okay, so we are going to finish challenge 2 apparently. Now this is channel two. Come on, come on. And the answer is 1018. Let's see if that's true. 1018. Yes, okay. Bragging a little bit, we have finished it. Publish this on the channel as well. Okay, um, anything to clean up before we go to the next one? Let me see. So this is the grid size. Okay, this is for hashing a grid. That's what I would expect. Nothing weird there. Remove group. raining a lot and uh, okay yeah looks clean enough it's not horrible I don't need you okay this 14 challenge one and two and pushed It was working yesterday, why am I missing the key now?
Oh, hold on. Somebody told me that I have something broken in my channel. Ah, oh, we can we can fix later. Wait, wait. Let me see where they go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I will I will fix that later. Uh, okay, challenge 14. Done. Challenge 15. Yeah, so um, I have been... Yeah, let's do this maybe in another half an hour. Let's see if we can do challenge number one. Okay. Okay, here you encounter a pair of dueling generators. The generators, called generator A and generator B, so original, are trying to agree on a sequence of numbers. However, one of them is malfunctioning, and so the sequence don't always match. Okay. As they do this, a judge, judge waits for each of them to generate its net value. Compress the lowest 17, 16 bits of both values, and keep track of the number of times those part of the values match. Uh, what? Yeah, it's difficult to... I mean, reading in English, translating that to Spanish, and thinking what, how is being asked here is hard. <laughs> okay. Okay, so basically, you can generate two numbers and compare the last 16 bits of each and see how different they are. The generators both work on the same principle. To create its net, its, its net next value, a generator will take the previous value it produced, multiply it by a factor, and generator A uses this number, generator B uses this number, and then keep the remainder of dividing that result product by this thing, which is <sighs> very close to max. No, nothing. Nothing. This is. Uh, to, to the power of 128, I think. The final reminder is the value it produces next. Okay, to calculate the, each generator's first value, it it instead uses a specific starting value as its previous value, as listed in your puzzle input. Okay, so the input are the initial value of the generators. Uh, okay. For example, suppose that the for starting values generator A uses 65, minus 116, okay, while generator B uses 8921. Then the first five pairs of generator values are this, 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 and this. Why is that? Um, a generator will take off the previous. So in theory, is the initial value which is 65. 65 multiplied by this factor and then keep the reminder of dividing that result produced produce by this one so this mod this and it's 1 million at, yeah okay okay got it and then for the next one it's basically the same right but using the value instead. Yeah, okay. But this. In binary, these pairs are with neutral, are this, and then here you can see that the lowest here, the, the right 16 bits of the third value match. Yes. They are the same because of this one match. After processing these five pairs, the judge, judge will have added only one to its total. Okay, so it's not the number of bits; it's the whole string. Okay, to get a significant sample, the judge will like to consider forty fucking million pairs. That's a lot. Okay, better be fast. Yeah, but it's all math. Oh man, 40 million! That's... 
and my previous challenge was um, like 10 seconds for 128 rolls and here is 40 millions okay okay so basically I need to, to do this and count this cool um, doesn't seem very hard at least the part one of the challenge okay so as usual um, the puzzle input probably I should you always I mean only use the numbers I don't have to um, so I don't have to parse it but it's, it's easier that way just it's more consistent okay uh, no, so the test for this, this is day 15, challenge 1. So let, let's do this for 5. So initial A is, uh, worth it, 65. Initial B is a thousand something then I expect the challenge of I'm going to have a function that I want to pass three parameters the two initial values and the count the number of iterations which is five and this I expect this to be equal to one okay so obviously this fails it's not implemented yet Let's do it. Um, so we'll see if A, B, uh, and count. Dot, dot. Let's save the factors. B. Yeah, so at least people can read it. Factor B. Hide that. Then I need the uh, product. Is that? Um. So um, what I need to do is just to iterate and then um, okay let's let's try to be more clear and explain what I'm thinking uh, what I'm doing okay so I want to iterate the number of uh, a top and a number of times defined by total and for each one I'm going to compute the all the values um, for A and for B so what I need to is to store the previous value for A and the previous value for B and then um, so the new previous value is going to be the how was it? The previous value times factor A mod the product. And the same thing for B. Um, so now, what I need to do is to pick the 16 rightmost uh, binaries and uh, digits in binary, right? Uh, is there a way to do this? An easy way? This I just need to shift it um,
Did you want the... Oh, no, that's... I'm trying to find if there is a bitwise operation to get this because it's going to be much, much faster. Because if I have to do this parsing the number and converting to array and picking a slice of the array and things like that, it's going to be super slow, especially if I want to do that 40 million times. So I'd rather do a um, bitwise operator that's going to be faster. Uh, this is English, I don't want English. I, want, I mean, this is Spanish, I want the Spanish. No, nope, really? Uh, okay. So this is an ant, right? It's new a at sixteen. Oh man, I'm really bad at. Binaries. So that's eight. Right, this this is to sixteen, right? No. Uh, let me see if. If I convert this to binary, it's super wrong because this is not the correct syntax. Is this one? Yeah, all ones. Okay, so what I want to do is if I do an and, this will return me the 16 characters. The 16 rightmost um, values for A and B, and I want to compare if they are equal. I mean, not return true, you just aument the count. So I augment the counter. Uh, right. Initial P. Let me clean up these variables a little bit. I want to just use A and B all the time as variables that I overwrite. Overwrite is not um, super nice, but it will work. Okay, so this augments A, augments B, and then we compute. We count how many times they are the same, and then we return the counter, right? So that's pretty much it. Let's see. Expect the zero to equal one. What happened? Okay, let's do this step by step. So uh, a sixty-five b. Let's uh, use this example. 65 and then B is that thing. Okay, and then compute the new A and the new B. Seems correct. Seems correct. Then I get the most, the binary part. Uh, is this 
the same as this. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. And then do the same for 32. No, this is not giving me the 16 more most top character because I think this should be 16. I think this should be yes, it has to be 16, right? Okay, much better. So rerun this with 16, and I don't need to debug for now. It's still zero. Okay. So we know this A B thingy is correct, right? Let me, actually let me come check that that's correct. So A is that value next iteration one one eight yes two four okay. So that's correct. Then which part you don't like? Okay. This seems that are the same, seems correct. Okay, we know fixed first iteration is not is not it, second iteration is not it, a iteration. This would be the same. Okay. And this should match this, right? Yes, that's that's okay. And then why you are not okay? They are the same. So how come this is true then? Oh, the order of the operators. Damn it. How damn! Okay, now it's working. <laughs> it should be fast. It's, there is nothing fancy here. Let's do this for a million. Oh my god. <laughs> um, let me extract this. And again. The dog is here. What do you want? Ah, super wet. It's raining outside, and my dog is trying to climb on me, and it's wet. Uh, what is it? Hey, Dentor. Say hello. Hello. You helping? Give me 20 minutes, okay? Yes, 20 minutes, not okay? Yes, don't give me 20 minutes. Okay, so the challenge. Tantor. It's going to receive the input. I'm going to do um, split by lines.
and then we are for each line we are going to uh, extract the what was the input for each line we're going to extract this number so um, I know that I could have write, just directly write the number but I want all the tests to be similar in the sense that they parse a, a file to get the input and then go from there generator starts starts with um, a number till the end of the string not this this is the end and then so this is uh, initial a Oh, oh yeah, and then this is initial B, line 1, and then we call process with initial A as a number, and tell, don't do that on down, man, go downstairs, go, 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 Behave. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so um, we are going to process this. Um, let's start with 10 times and before going crazy with 10 millions. Um, so this is, I'm, I have to export this function so I can. Um, test it her process now process is a bad idea because it's a constant in, in node it's a global variable so this is a uh, generate challenge one okay and need to import that function And the first test is just testing that function. Yeah, nothing has changed. And then the input let's do it for ten times. Why not? What's wrong with you now? Okay, so input we split by lines, we have two lines. Oh, it's generator B. We just run it. It's not process, it's generate. And we have to return the value, of course. Uh, and it says zero. Okay, could be zero. And then Oh, and 40 millions. 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And it says that it should. This is my input. Actually, you can test this with, without my input. I don't um so I don't I don't have to go directly to with the with the input. I can start with the challenge. Which probably I don't need anyway. Yeah, let's let's do this complete. And then this is forty millions. Man. How fast is this one to be? Should be reasonably fast. 588 588 yeah okay awesome so now let's go with the full input
full input um, crunching numbers 603 there's 603 that's correct that's not too high why uh, because I don't know regular expressions right yes not 603 is 569 are you going to allow me to submit this? Not to stop. 28 seconds left to wait. Okay, we can wait. Let me close the stuff that I don't need. Um, Ten seconds. Okay. Um, so this is it, we are doing the challenge, we are waiting 10 seconds, how was your day? My day. <laughs> Let's see if I can finish this. I have been here for one hour and a half and I have found that after one hour doing the challenges my brain refuses to work at good at it or at, at, as it uses to be at the beginning, so I'm start to making stupid mistakes. But I don't want to, to leave the challenge uh, we have doing I don't want to leave the challenge for a day, we have doing the two challenges, the one and two. So let's see, I'm pretty sure it's going to be okay now. Let's see, yes. Let's see if I can actually finish this. Okay. In the interest of trying to align a little better, the generators get more picky about the numbers they actually give to the judge. They still generate values in the same way, but now they only, ha only hand a value to the judge when it meets their criteria. Generator a looks for values that are multiples of 4, generator B looks for values that are multiples of 8. Okay. Each generator functions completely independently. They both go through values entirely on their own, only occasionally handing an acceptable value to the judge, and otherwise working through the same sequence of values as before and until they find one. The judge still waits for each generator to provide it, it with a value before comparing them using the same comparison method as before. It keeps track of the order of the values. Oh! Okay, so basically, is is Wait, wait, no, hey, <laughs> Unfortunately, even though these chains make more bits similar on average, none of these values lower 16 bits, oh, for example. It's not until this, blah, 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 blah. This change makes the generator much slower and the judge is getting impatient. It's not only willing to consider 5 million parts. Okay, so basically it's the same, but... Oh, this is super interesting. It's the same, but the number generated here... Uh, this guy only generates the number if um, it's a multiple of 4 or a multiple of 8. Meaning that I'm going to have two separate loops generating values at different pace, at different rate, uh, rates. That's an excellent case for JavaScript generators. Ha! I really like we are doing this one. <laughs> I think this is the first time I use generators. Generate, uh, I don't even remember the syntax. Use this generator with arrow function. Can you use with arrow function? No? Okay. So, it's a function that receives the initial and and just keep, looking, keep going forever. Okay? So what this guy is going to do is um, So we save the initial and yep, and then go through infinite. So 
So what we're going to do is generate a sequence. Tender, one second, please. What do you want? Can you finish this challenge? Can you finish this challenge? Just half an hour, okay? Half an hour and we are done. That's fine. Cool. You cool with that? Are you cool with that, Prim? Okay. Let's hear. Let's learn about generators, bro. Okay. Just stay here with me. Are you going to let me program? Usually it does that. Comes. He doesn't like what I'm in the computer and comes to me and says, Dude, uh, we need to play. You're at, ho you're at home now, right? Stop computers. Just play with me. <sighs> oh. I know, I know. Yes, I know, I know, I know. I know. Just let me finish this. Why does this have to focus? <laughs> okay, so what I was saying. This is going to, a generator is going to generate, it has an internal loop. This while loop is going to generate values until um, A is multiple of 4. So let me build that. And um, what do you do? What's so red? After this, what do you like? It is the function of GL. I know, I know, I'm working on it. When it finds one, it returns the value. And that's. Whoa! Okay. And basically, it does this in an infinite loop. Okay? So, for um, in an infinite loop, it, I don't need this. Basically, it keeps generating values until it finds one that uh, uh, so I can I can simplify this. So while true, I do this. If is multiple of four, I just yield this value. Super easy to read. Man, I, I really like generators. I'm going to make, make this generic and instead of having this function here, I'm run the con a conditional function here. So now, um, So that's the generator function, right? Um, cool. Let me clean this a little bit. So this is the challenge too. Uh, no, uh, I don't need that for now. So this is the generate two. It's, it's whoops. It's not an ideal ideal name. Yeah, my dog is called is called Trantor. Do you do you know where that name comes from? Let me know in the in the chat. Okay, so uh, the generator. What this guy is going to do is um, how do you nest the two generators? All oh, right, it's just a loop. This is generate. Initial A. No, this is uh, 
generator A, and then I pass the function, which is how do you tell if a value is multiple of four? If if the mod actually yeah if stupid. A multiple of eight, right? Was it? around a little bit so uh, it's closer functions that are similar are closer so it's easy to understand okay and it will be this should be the same and then I compare them and then I return the total that's super easy I can probably generalize this later by passing this as a const um, parameter here but that should be the support for now and I don't need this one Yep, 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 yep. So everything should still work, right? Yes, that's number one. And then go with number two. Cool. Love this one. I really love this test. This is generate two. And then it's only five million. So let's do this for ten so I don't create a loop. Um. I should have created that test first, but okay. Just for now, let's let's go for it. I just want to finish this today. So let's go full um full test. E generator challenge two challenge two. What do you like about it? I'm not exporting it, right? Yes. J generators, I love them. The idea is so cool. Okay, so we have the first value is 116, and then what happened? Go in. Oh wow, what? Wow. What don't you like about this? No? Um how do you use a generator? I don't remember how to use a sim generator. Okay, so you. This is my generator, and then. It yields a value. No, right, I need to generate the generator. Generator for A. Wait, this is a bit, the syntax of this is not super nice and it is a bit trickier. So first I need to pass the conditional, that is the initial, I just need to pass the conditional, okay? I need to pass the conditional, so that's the conditional. And that's just generator A. And generator A, what it happens? I mean, I don't really need a generator now that I think about it. Oh, I want to use generators, but I don't need them. Okay. 
Um, yeah, it's just a function that receives. I will, if I have time, I will implement this as generators. I really want to use generators. <laughs> so it says the initial value, and then uh, basically it iterates forever until it finds something that matches the, condu the condition and just returns it. Yeah, it's, it's going to be okay. So this, this was correct. This is the value, and they start with A, and they start with B. Yeah, see, okay, it's working now. Let's see if this works, if this doesn't. If this does not work, I will create test for every function. So this is five millions, right? Five million pairs. And I pass this and blah 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 blah. And the test is testing that this is equal to one. It's going to be more than one. For sure. So just run the test. Sixty-nine. Not very big, submit. No, okay. I, I knew it. It's not correct. This is absolutely wrong. This is not how you check if something is equal. It's a multiple of 4 or 8. Run this again. Three one four. Is this correct? Ah, uh, twenty five seconds waiting. Yeah, this this should be okay, right? Ah, uh, generators was so fun. Yeah. Come on. Yes, generator works for fun. I know, I know. Maybe we can refactor it later. I know. Will you help me? Oh, it's not high. 314. Okay. I, w I will do the test. I will do the test. It's easy. Okay. These functions are not named very well, let's say, but I'm gonna start with that. Uh, so, full example of generate 2 with these initial numbers is said it was here, right? <laughs> So these are the values, these are the binaries, and then zero. Let's see if the values, at least, if the values match. So the first value for A is this, seems correct. First value for B is is wrong. What's wrong with B? Oh, it's not factor A, I need to pass the factor as a separate thing. So this is factor A. This is factor B, okay. Run this again. What is B now? Much better, right? Yes, looks the same. Go for it. Just run the tests. 
Don't wait for me. 298. That's right. Okay, share on Twitter, and I think that's pretty much all for today. Um, let me clean up this a little bit because this looks like shit. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I'm going to add another test because this says that. Uh, This says that I need to run this for 156 times to actually get the first value. This working? Oh wait, all the tests for the previous days. Okay. Yeah, day 14 was slow. Okay, let's clean up this a little bit because this looks like shit. I like my constants in uppercase. Um, this is mask. So this is this is the conditional, the functor, and the initial number. Now this doesn't make sense anymore in this initial conditional conditional factor and conditional. This is much easier to read in this order I think. Okay, this is B factor B. So this function is done. This and this are pretty much the same. Generate and generate to except that generate now. Let's do this return generate to with um, initial A, initial B. This is the total. And then uh, I need, want to pass the function to generate the next A, which is function receives the previous A and returns this except that here this is always true this is my initial B You know what? I only need to pass the conditional. I don't need to pass everything. So this is true, this is true, this is true, bloop, bloop, bloop. All this is gone now. And then this is uh, comp A, comp B. No wait, I need to extract this to a better function. So this is generate. Okay, so the function that is going to work is this generate all. Okay, generate all. And this is going to receive the initial value of A, the condition for A, the initial value for B, and the condition for B. Okay, so it's going to run generator is going to pass the, val the previous value for A, the factor for A, and the condition for A. And this is the same, but the condition for B. So this is going to generate all the numbers, okay? And it's going to call generator, which uh, name I don't like. It's going to be just generate. Generate next. Okay. So 
to dać mi to. Na. Generate all. Generate just calling generate all with initial values and true for the conditionals. And generate two is going to call generate all with this um, this function for the conditionals. Okay, and then the challenges. And that's it. Okay, the tests should be the same. Please be the same. What? What don't you, don't you like? Syntax error, where? Everything is currently closed. What, what, what are you complaining about? We can keep with the theme of um, arrow functions. Yeah, this is not correct. See, just something to, to split something. I found this bug because this extension I have, which is about colorizing uh, parentheses. Because you would expect, you see, like, I open parenthesis, is yellow, and I close it, and it's yellow again. And for nested parenthesis, you can see with the order is yellow, pink, then close pink, open pink, close pink, yellow. So, you know, it's always, um, it keeps the color. So you can do something like this, then this, whatever is inside, and you can keep track of the colors. And in this case, it's, that helps a lot because it's very visual. Like, I know that I open as yellow, I should close as yellow, and this is pink. So, here is the problem. Now it's easy to see the colors and see what things are close and where. See, again, yellow, pink, something's wrong. Generate and generate those. Generate two, sorry. Okay, and count is not a function. Which one is not? Of course, it's not a function because here I'm passing this, and this should be a function. And nothing works. <laughs> generate is not a function. How come it's not? Because it's generate all. Okay. No, it's. it's No, it's, it's a function, dude. Test 17. Expect generate, generate, generate 2. Generate, generate 2. Too much renaming. This generate, generate 2. Okay. Now green, green. Um. Generate, let me change the names a little bit. So this will be generate and compare. This is generate all. Generate and compare all. And this is generate and compare multiples. So somebody's asking me what's the extension for the parentheses is called um, rainbow something it's rainbow brackets but it doesn't seem it's installed it's, let me I'm pretty sure this is installed uh, bracket per colorizer you know it's perfect example here it shows things that are broken because of different colors and things that are okay because they are the same color and it 
works with these three marks, the round parentheses, square parentheses, and, and brackets. And then you can have some, some configuration that forces you to um, Even if, like this one, if they are in the same level, they always use yellow. If, if not, they can alternate colors. I, I, I like this one because I, it's easier to see. But anyway, it's, it's, you can customize it, and it supports a lot of languages. And I think you can even, you can even, yeah, you can even configure it to add new, um, new symbols, and you can add new colors. Is, is really good, I like it. Um, yeah, so um, everything seems to work. It's not very slow ish. Wait, that's uh, one. Oh, I need to try. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not running everything. Let me run all the tests to make sure that it works. Yeah. Okay. Everything works. So, I think I'm going to wrap it for today. Not very much. I did two challenges. Not bad. Uh, two challenges in two hours. Looks like a good um, number. Let me commit this. Um, so, that was day for challenges one and two now I can push because I haven't finished yeah this is broken I will fix it soon so in case you want to see the code the the code is there the the URL for my github I will um, update this as much as possible and also this is my Twitter handle so if you want to follow me you will get notified when I start a new challenge um, if everything goes according to plan, I will do the next challenge tomorrow at 5 p.m. for my time, which is, I think it's 10 a.m., no. well, in 22 hours, okay? So, uh, I hope you have liked it. If you have liked it, like, if you like it uh, please subscribe to Twitch so you can get notification when I'm about to start a new stream and follow me on Twitter to get more... Um, notifications about the channels and other things I tweet about uh, coding and programming and things like that. So thank you for being there. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.